What's up everybody, my name is Stuart and I am so excited because today we're starting a brand new series called, What Was I Made For? Throughout this series, we're gonna take a look at the lies that we may be believing about ourselves and how to fight them so we can do what we were made to do. Now, before we jump in, I wanna tell you a little story about a time I got caught in a huge lie. My transition from fifth grade to sixth grade was a pretty big deal because not only was I moving to middle school but also math is by far my worst subject. My dad knew it, my mom knew it. I think most of my teachers knew it and I had this one particular teacher that just was so hard. Now I don't think the math was that difficult, but I didn't like math, I didn't like applying myself and my grade did this constant spiral down. And I kept telling my parents lies. I kept telling them that I was doing good. I wouldn't bring home progress reports. Somehow I figured out how to hide my report card until the fateful day that they realized that I was failing the class. Now, it's the only class I've ever failed. Part of the reason why it's the only class I've ever failed is because of the consequences of me lying to my parents, because that was bad. But the truth is, we're all tempted to lie sometimes, right? We know we shouldn't, but maybe we don't want to get into trouble, so we lie. Or we don't want to feel embarrassed or ashamed, so we lie. Or maybe we don't want someone to be mad at us, so we lie. Yeah, we're all tempted to lie sometimes, but I wanna take it a step further. Not only do we sometimes want to lie, but we're also all tempted to live lies. What does that mean? We don't just tell lies. We tend to live in ways that are untrue to who we want to be or who we should be, or even who we actually are. Why do we do this? Well, for all kinds of reasons. We wanna be liked, we wanna fit in, we wanna impress people, we wanna seem a certain way, we wanna feel better about ourselves. Ultimately, we do this because we believe lies. We live lies when we believe lies. There's a super smart guy named Henry Nouwen who knows all kinds of stuff about faith and how our minds work. And he shares that there are three lies that we all tend to believe about ourselves. First, I am what I have. We live this lie when we make life all about what we have or about getting things we want. Maybe they're physical things like cool clothes or name brand products, all good things, not bad things in and of themselves. Maybe we want followers or to have influence. Whatever they may be, we make our life all about what we have or what we can get. The second lie, I am what I do. We live this lie when we make life all about the things we do and what we accomplish. This could be our talents, our grades, or our hobbies. It could be that award you won or you didn't win or the team you play for. You are a baseball player. You are a straight A student. You are a musician. Whatever you do, it begins to feel like that's who you are. And the last lie is I am what other people say about me. We live this lie when we make life all about other people's opinions of us. We're constantly trying to get the people around us to think certain things about who we are, what we have, and what we do. We strive to maintain this status of being popular, well-liked, or even keeping up the appearance of being perfect. Whether good opinions or bad, whatever people think about you, that is who you believe you are. Now, remember, these are all lies, meaning they aren't true. You are so much more than these things. These things are not who you are. And if you find yourself believing one of these lies, you're not alone. So many people fall into these traps. When we believe these lies or other lies like them, we find ourselves living in a way that isn't true to who we truly are. Again, when we believe lies, we start living lies. We're gonna look at a story found in the New Testament of the Bible in a book called Acts. The writer shared with us about a time when two people were living a major lie. Let me set the scene. The early church was just getting started and the text says, all believers were united in heart and mind and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. 
Jesus followers were all working together to get the good news of Jesus out into the world. They were sharing everything they had so that no one in the community would be in need. No one was being forced to sell their things and give to the poor. But as the community of believers grew and spread the good news of Jesus, more and more people wanted to be a part of what was happening. The verse continues, but there was a certain man named Ananias who with his wife Sapphira sold some property. He brought part of the money to the apostles, claiming it was the full amount. With his wife's consent, he kept the rest. So here we find a couple, Ananias and Sapphira, and they wanted so badly to be a part of what this growing group of Jesus followers was doing. I'm sure they were on board with the message of Jesus and they wanted the disciples to think they were all in. So what did they do? They lied. They told the leaders of this faith community that the money they were giving from the sale of their property was the full amount, but it wasn't. Keep this in mind that they weren't forced or told to give the full amount. The issue was that they lied about giving the full amount. The verse continues, then Peter said, Ananias, why have you let Satan fill your heart? You lied to the Holy Spirit and you kept some of the money for yourself. The property was yours to sell or not sell as you wished. And after selling it, the money was also yours to give away. How could you do a thing like this? You weren't lying to us, but to God. They got caught. And Peter was telling this guy that this was a bigger deal than just telling a lie. He was lying to God. He was living a lie. Ananias clearly wanted to impress this group. He sold his land after all, and he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to give them any money, but he wanted to. Then he made a decision that was in direct contrast with what he knew to be true and good. We don't know why Ananias lied, but it isn't a stretch to think that maybe he believed that he was only as good as what others thought about him. Remember line number three, I am what other people think about me. We do not know why he lied, but we do know he was living a lie. Like Ananias, it can be easy for each of us to fall into the trap of living a lie. We've all found ourselves in a situation where we can choose to live a lie or live the truth. So when we find ourselves in that situation, what should we do? In a letter written to the Colossians, the Apostle Paul wrote this, don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds, put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your creator and become like him. Paul was sharing that who you are doesn't match up with living lives. This means that if you're a Jesus follower, when you became a Christian, you became a new creation. The closer you follow Jesus, the more like God you become. And God is the God of truth. There's no dishonesty in God. Therefore, you were made to live the truth. God made you and God made you to be real. You don't have to live lies. And not only that, you can also be honest with the people around you. You can be yourself. Sure, some people may not accept you for who you are, and guess what? Those people are not your people. But what I do know is you have a faith family who wants you to be exactly who you are. They wanna know you, not what you have, not what you do, but you. You were made to be real with yourself and with others. So how do we do that? Let me suggest three steps you can take. First, identify the lies you are tempted to live. Do you identify with one of the lies we talked about earlier? I am what I have, I am what I do, I am what other people say I am. Or maybe you're tempted to live a different lie, a lie like no matter what you have or do, you'll never be enough. Maybe you live the lie that you've messed up too many times and God may have given up on you. Today, I want you to take some time to identify the lie about yourself that you tend to believe. Secondly, see the truth. Let me just tell you that no matter what lie you're believing, there are some truths to keep in mind. Whether you see that you're a child of God or not doesn't change the fact that it's true. So once you identify the lie you're tempted to live, the next step is to see that truth. And how do you do that? By reading scripture, by writing down truths and putting them in places you can see. Just like when we believe lies, we live lies. When we believe truth, we live in truth. And lastly, choose a new story to live. Once you believe the truth, you get to choose the story you live. So I wanna ask you this question. What is the story you want your life to tell? 
Do you really wanna get five, 10, 15 years down the road and look back and think about all the times you believed lies about yourself? All the times you pretended and hid from being honest with the people around you? Or do you wanna be able to look back and be so glad that you chose to believe the truth about who you are and live that truth out? You were made to be real with yourself and with others. I believe every single one of us wants to see the truth and choose a new story to live. So today, when you go to group, I want you to ask yourself this question. What is the story you want your life to tell?